whether it's new energy, whether it's, or uh, if they create value, then the existing system has to offset that value by printing more money. Hello everyone, today our guest is Jeff Booth. Jeff Booth is an entrepreneur, tech leader, author of Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future, GP Eco Death Capital. In this video, Jeff Booth talks about the macro situation and the future short-term and long-term outlook of Bitcoin. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Sometime in the Eastern Time Zone, evening on July 25, 2021, was the start of a magical run for Bitcoin, punctuated by a late-night 5% jump, noted by the yellow arrow in the chart. Bitcoin was in the mid $30,000 range at the time, but by November it had reached an all-time high of around $68,000. That era, basically ancient history at this point, zoomed back into my head last week. Bitcoin started 1 p.m. Eastern Time on October 25 at $19,808.06, got as high as $20,176 during the hour, and was at $20,126.20 at 2 p.m. ET. The low in that hour was also $19,808.06, an only go up hour. Granted, this move wasn't as big as the July 2021 one, but it raised eyebrows nonetheless. Bitcoin's price could be up for any number of reasons, but here are two key things that happened on Wednesday. The Bank of Canada surprised financial markets by raising interest rates by only 50 basis points instead of 75 basis points. And the U.S. Census Bureau also reported a 10.9% decline in new home sales in September around the same time. I think the people that are really uh, intrigued by this space, they're, they're naturally curious, they're open, they want to learn. Um, and this is something that it just, you're, you're constantly learning because it changes all of your previous, uh, we've never had something like this. The world has never had something like this. So our filter looking back at all of the world, all history, couldn't, couldn't, like all of those models, like say, the sailor would say, would be broken because we the history has never had something that has been decentralized and secure. Uh, like this at the base layer so so that means that means and maybe that's why entrepreneurs or engineers or people that understand systems can do it because see it first because they're intuiting what it'll look like instead of measuring what it would because the measurement comes from the system mm -hmm. and when when you're when you're when you're an entrepreneur you have to understand what people will do given a different variable you have to you have to build something that doesn't exist today and you have to take that risk that capital risks that time risk on the bet that you're right um and then the behavior change because you're right because you've delivered the more value you also have to predict the behavior change and you have to predict what is going to the competitive landscape going to look like with that behavior change and what's going to rush it and so so maybe just maybe just this what I've done all my life and entrepreneur wa watching that maybe that gave me a, a unique skill set to look at this but that you see the, the highest what I see in this and this is why it's so exciting um, a space you see the most curious people around you feel you see just active learning and and if you, if if you're one of those people that are that are constantly trying to learn the space is <laughs> it's never ending the day after I was walking around Edinburgh with uh, with my family, and this uh, this older lady came up to me, and she she said uh, she said I I was crying the entire time you guys were talking. Wow. I was so moved. I came here, uh, I came to this conference, um, not knowing anything about Bit not knowing anything about Bitcoin, and completely kind of broken in the world because everything's going and I have an 18 year old son and thinking about him and she said you you guys th this conference just totally changed my life mm. I have hope uh, and 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 I'm going to go back and tell everybody I know I'm gonna, they're going to all be downloading <laughs> downloading wallets gonna, and, and so you never know the impact you make like so in that time 
you got to see the impact. But most times you don't see the impact you make through all of the people that you touch. And so just what do you think about is just make just make positive impact. Just go and and that in this community I think you see a lot of that. And those people are spreading out. That's why it's so that's why this is unstoppable because it's us. It's not and I mean us on us for. It's it's the best in human nature that mm. comes out on something and it just and, and it's it spreads node to node, which is us. Many of the mentors, many of the organization organize of the whole whole creative destruction lab, super smart, wealthy, hedge funds, venture capital, everything else brilliant. Most have read my book. And and they still and and, and they still come back to thinking you can solve it from the system. And and so I, I'm having this conversation. I'm of two minds. I, I want to help the entrepreneurs, but everything I do in that in, in, in that system, if the entrepreneurs win and create value, whether it's new energy, whether it's, or, uh, if they create value, then the existing system has to offset that value by printing more money. And, and trying to explain that to a whole bunch of um, seemingly smart people, what you realize, and really nice people, what you realize is how far the rest of the world is away from this. We're so early know this but uh, but you said everything's based off a two percent inflation rate the two percent inflation rate is is a construct that allows governments to manipulate interest rates da uh, down <laughs> to be able to manipulate a, a currency and then what ends up happening with that construct because you have to have inflation on a credit but you have to have inflation on a credit-based system is people vote for more and more and um, first the market breaks at the, at the housing or not the housing market but first in 1981 right you have to move the debt up the stack <laughs> by taking it to government debt and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger um, all around the world and you hit these the, these long debt cycles that cascade into global collapse and there's just no way out of that like it's just and and it, it, it's because it's a really simple process throughout history technology and the free market or the free market and what we do technology is just a word for for our efficiency solving problems right put into it um, it reduces prices and it's uh and and so a free market is deflationary by nature um and a credit-based system has to go the other way and now it's moving that move is so the rise of the debt is in response to trying to to stop deflation from from uh, from uh, the technology uh, moving, and it has to keep getting bigger and bigger. Um, and it has to. So when you see these offsets, when you see how much debt, it's just it's that exponential pattern. And even if you stop it for a second, no matter where it stops, and it, so, so this tightening, and you guys know this, this tightening, two choices: one blow up the entire world, everything stops, right? And the entire thing resets. Um, and they're going to try to do that for a little bit, but it's because of a geopolitical reason we'll get into in a second, um, the war thing. Um, but the, but, or go back to yield curve control and everything else and go straight back up to that exponential pattern because the system will collapse without it. So it doesn't, all of the little things that are happening, guilt market, I know those aren't little things for the citizens, <laughs> but all of these little things inside there, it's like, it doesn't really matter. Um, it, it matters for the citizens in that, but it's going to happen no matter what, because the system is completely unstable and growing more and more unstable every day. And it, it, it can't, there's no way the system can solve it. What I feel like the cutting off the chips is, is what, what, uh, they, what the US did to Japan before Japan invaded Pearl Harbor, the cut off oil, right? So they're they're baiting China into uh, into Taiwan because I think China has to now. So the game behind the game, I think, is this. And so so just if that is the game behind the game, because the currency regime we've all grown up in can't function anymore in a world and uh, for global trade, and we live in a global trade world. Um, the geopolitical risks are so much bigger. If that is the game behind the game, then you might expect that the U.S. tightens for longer than they 
than, than people are expecting them to. And you could, you could have a complete rollover and start starting a credit cascade of, of what you're talking about. I was asked today by somebody very, very um, interface with government from business council, but very senior, big business, uh, knows, knows everybody. And he was, he was talking about Bitcoin price being down. And I said, have you looked at the user growth? Like, um, it's a staggering user growth, both on Lightning and and, and Bitcoin. Um, and and again, the definition of a network effect for uh, uh, for Rao Paul <laughs> um, is every user makes the network stronger for all users. The definition is of a network effect isn't you just user growth. It makes the network stronger for all users. And now you have U.S. currency and currencies that had a network effect that no longer have a network effect because they don't pass that test. They won't die tomorrow, right? The U.S. dollar is not going to die tomorrow, but it doesn't pass that test anymore. Every user making that that stronger, whereas Bitcoin has has a network effect. Um, and this is this is subtle yet really in interesting. Most network effects die because eventually because they centralize so much and 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 this it's centralization creates so much power at the top that the company has to choose users right when when you go to youtube when you go to what's ha what happened still probably will happen on twitter um but when you go to that you have to make choices for some over the others and it starts to lose its network effect and opens up the opportunity for somebody else to create something on a network effect because bitcoin is forever decentralized and secure that network effect every user forever um, makes that network stronger and stronger for every other user it's the most beautiful thing in the world it's the most beautiful thing we've ever seen while bitcoin and crypto soared most of big tech had a bad week last week alphabet amazon apple meta platforms and microsoft reported quarterly earnings each of these companies, except Apple, straight up had a bad time. Between October 24 and October 28, Google shed 6.2%, Amazon dropped 13.3%, Apple gained 4.5%, Meta crashed 23.5%, and Microsoft lost 4.8%. Meanwhile, Bitcoin gained 6.8%. If you enjoy this highlight videos, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.